Hello guys, welcome to the Core Party Series episode 4. This is going to be a little bit different instead of me just telling you about a certain subject with court reporting mike had the great idea to ask me some questions as if he's interviewing me um i've had a few comments on the last few episodes of the series of just questions that i haven't really gotten around to or maybe thought that other people would want to know so he's going to ask me some of those questions and also he came up some with his own maybe common questions that people want to know more about court reporting and hopefully this is just going to be kind of fun but he's going to sit behind the camera in a minute and ask me these questions. I don't know these questions. And are they supposed to be rapid fire? Yes, so I just went through some of her court reporting videos and got a few of the questions that she didn't answer. And the other ones are just ones I came up with. Just general questions about court reporting. Okay, so you're ready, are you ready to go back there? Yes. Okay, Chloe Salazar. Oh, no. We have 10 questions here. Just your generic questions about court reporting. Okay. Question number one, what college did you attend and what certificate did you have? Okay, so I attended Alvin Community College and that's actually the town I met Michael in. But I attended Alvin Community College near Houston and it is a smaller community college that has a court reporting program within the college. And sadly, they are no longer doing the court reporting program because not enough students did it or passed it. Um, and they didn't have enough funding. So that school is no longer open. I know a few people have asked me that, but kind of sad because it's such a great school. And then what's the certificate you said? Yes, or what degree do you have? Okay, so you can, you don't need a degree. You just need your court reporting uh, state exam certificate. But I do suggest getting at least your associate's degree because I don't know, I just think it's good to have that along with it. So I have my associate's degree and then also my court reporting certificate. Question number two, for someone who is going to school online for court reporting, mm -hmm. what are some tips that you learned from school that could help them get through their school? Okay, that's kind of hard because I didn't do online, but my tip, my biggest tip, whether you're online or in person in court reporting school is to practice and put the time aside to practice. So for me, when I went into school, School was about like half the day, a little more than half the day of in the morning. And then I would come home and practice every day just for one hour, but sitting down on my machine practicing for one hour without stopping. And I made sure I did that every day before I did anything else um, right after school. And even on Saturday, I would do that before I went anywhere. Um, really just one hour a day plus school. So if you didn't have school that day, I or like if you don't have school every day, um, especially I guess online, I would just put in more hours uh, towards practicing and I would do, I would start out warming up to practice. I would do a speed lower than I was in and then I would gradually build up to my speed and then also when I was doing lower, do harder dictation and then I would end or close to the end, I would go higher than my speed and I would always end, try to end on my speed writing pretty clean. Question number three, when practicing, was it always just listening to a tape or did you ever practice with, I guess, live people mm -hmm. talking to each other or taking your machine to a specific place to practice? So in school we had, luckily our professors spoke live dictation and they were awesome, you know, they had to time themselves. And so in, while I was in class we had that, but then when I came home to practice they actually had recordings for us of them um, having practice material. So I was listening to recordings of them while I was at home. And then I also would sometimes bring my machine to church with me and Bible study. And I feel like there was one other place I brought it to. Just kind of anything where you know someone's going to be sitting and talking for a while and maybe you didn't have time to practice that much that week or you think it might be kind of hard. I know sometimes I even would sit at home and write the news. That was kind of hard. I didn't do that very much, but it's kind of fun to do too. So. Question number four. How long have you been a court reporter? Um, six years now. Why is that? Yeah, six oh years. I know. Okay. How hard was the state test? And for somebody taking it soon, what is one tip for them before they go in? The state exam... This is kind of scary for me to put out there, but I thought it was a very fair test. Um, 
I passed on my first try and I had I got pretty good scores and I think it was definitely the program that I attended that prepared me for that because it was I would say school was harder than the state exam. The reason why the state exam was hard was because of my nerves. That was the one thing that would have made me fail was my nerves. Um, not because I couldn't write at that speed or anything like that. But there is two parts of the exams. There's the oral, which you will hear someone speaking and it's recorded and you're writing certain speeds. And then there's also the written, which is multiple choice questions. The written was a lot harder to me than the oral. I thought I didn't pass the written, but I did, thankfully. My tip for taking the state exam for the first time, or any time, I guess, really, would be to... I guess for someone taking it the first time, my mindset was I don't have another opportunity to take this, even though you do. Um, you do. If you fail it, you can take it again. I think you have to wait a certain amount of time, or if you take it within a certain amount of time. I'm not sure, but I just kind of had the mindset of this is my one and only chance, which I don't know if that's good advice because maybe that could make it more like stressful, but that was kind of my like one and done, I have to do this. And I remember when the first oral test started, the literary, and I heard the recording coming out, I was frozen and I wasn't moving and I was like, oh my gosh, I just bombed my test from my nerves. But then I literally remember leaning forward to make myself press down on my machine. And most of my ears um, out of all three tests were on my literary because I started off kind of uh, nervous and slow. But so my advice would be to just kind of have a good mindset that you're gonna pass it the first time. You don't have another option practice for it get ready for it know you're going to be nervous but just try to push through those nerves that's kind of my like advice and don't take the state exam if you're not ready for it there was people in there who had thousands of errors on each test and i'm just like why i feel like their school was making them take it and i was like i don't understand why i wouldn't go in to take it just to see how it is or to get your nerves out of like no like just take it to pass is that ruthless all right next question is there different brands of steno machines and if so which one do you have that's a good question there is different brands i don't think there's like a crazy amount out there because you know our job is such like a niche job um i have the, the basic diamante and it's used even from another core porter when i got it because when you're starting out everything's so expensive so it was a used one from another court reporter and I've had it now for six years and obviously it was used so it's older than six years and I've had no issues with it. Those machines are like, can last through anything. So I would say you probably need only two or three machines within your whole career. Like that, would, I don't know, I guess if you want like extra ones, but they're gonna last you a long time. And I have the Diamante, it's basic, it's kind of the older generation, Not, it's not too old, but I know there's a lot of like newer ones and ones that you don't have to press like, I think there's even one where you don't have to press actual keys or something, I don't know. Or like the keys are separated. I just stick with the tried and true basic, that's what I have. I'll put a picture up here. Next question. After these people pass their state exam test, how easy is it for them to find a job, whether that be an official ship or oh, mm -hmm. depositions? So to get work is easy in the sense of like, you're gonna get bombarded with people needing court reporters, whether in court or not. Um, I obviously knew I wanted to do deposition freelance. And so um, I think I started getting emails as soon as I passed. And then also there was some court reporting firms within my area, within the Austin area that um, I knew to look into, I, I heard about, and that's just kind of how you get started. But with court, with an official position, those don't come around very often because there is an, uh, there is one court reporter for each courtroom in an official position. And they don't come around too often because that person usually stays in that courtroom for a long period of time. Uh, but there, it, they are still needed. There's so many subs that are needed in court. So if court is something that you're interested in, get on a sub list within your county, within the courthouse you want to work in, or even if you don't want to work in that courthouse or in that county, just get on the sub list, get experience. They need subs all the time. So you're, you're going to find a job. You just have to find the right people and the right, um, I guess, facilities to talk to, but you're going to get work more than you want probably. <laughs> Okay, next question. With you doing mostly depositions, do you prefer short de depositions or do you prefer some that last longer 
where you don't have to take so many in a week? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I, I like a mix of both and I think that's kind of like what everyone would expect. Some days I am like, man, I really don't need a lot of pages right now. I have a lot I need to work on. Or I'm just like, I don't want to have a long day today, which with freelance, that's what's nice about it is some days are shorter than others and you don't really know. But I've walked into depositions where they're like, oh, the witness didn't show up, so we're going to do a certificate of non-appearance, which basically is just like a form that I need to fill out as the transcript. And sometimes they can put something on the record. And then I just turn that in and I get paid like the minimum for that. So literally I'm just getting paid for going there and coming back. So that's nice sometimes. But then sometimes when you're like, I really need pages. I really want some work. And then you show up to something like that. That can be disappointing. But I think that's why I like freelance because I, it's not the same thing every day. So it is nice to have a few long ones because you get paid by page. So those obviously make a lot more money. And so those checks are bigger checks and those are nice but they obviously take a lot longer to send out so it's really depending on what you like i like bigger jobs sometimes because i like to be home i don't like taking a ton of depositions i'd rather do the back work a lot of people um hire out scopists and proofreaders i do my work 100 percent myself so i do a lot of the back work and i'd rather do that versus take you know a deposition every day of the week i'd rather i'd rather only take a couple a week and work on them at home so I prefer, I guess, a mix of both. Okay. You kind of talked about subbing already, but how does subbing in court work in the pay? So is it hourly or do you get a set pay for the day? How does that work? So I don't know if it's different between states or counties, but I am in Texas and I'm in the Austin area. Um, and so the county that I have subbed for, they have a half day pay and a full day pay. So if you're only taking, you know, from 9 a.m. to noon, like the morning docket, then you will get paid half day. And But if you take all day, you obviously get paid full day. But sometimes if you have just one hearing in the morning, but then you need to stay until they have a one hearing in the afternoon, you will get paid for the full day, even though you weren't riding from 9 to 5. And it's very good pay for not a lot of work. Now, if you could, so you get paid for the day and what your your time, I guess, just being there. But then um, if you took in a hearing or in a case that they want that transcript, they can call you and be like, hey, I want that transcript transcribed. And then it's kind of like doing depot work. Now you're on the scoping, the editing process and getting it to them. And you obviously get paid for that. So that's like pay on top of your pay of being there. So it quickly adds up. There was one December where I took a lot of sub jobs because just with Christmas and everything, I was like, let me just sub a lot. And then that way I don't have a lot on my back burner, but I'm still getting paid. And yeah, it adds up. It takes a while to get paid for sub jobs. It takes like a month, but it definitely adds up. How to get on a sub list is you just contact that courthouse or that county. And if you do know a court reporter or an official there, like my mom's an official in the county that I sub in. So it's really easy for me to get word out when I want to sub. But that's how you can just contact some of their, someone there, contact a court reporter there and say, hey, I'd like to get on your sub list. But just know that you're going to get bombarded probably with court reporters saying, hey, you know, I need to go to doctor's appointment this day. I need a sub for this day. That's kind of how it works. Pretty basic. Okay, last question, which you don't do a lot, but what is a day like for an official and do they work from home or is it always going into the courthouse every day, Monday through Friday? Yeah, so I had a lot of questions about official ship stuff and I have not been an official so I do feel a little leery giving information about that because I don't know much. My mom is an official so that's kind of how I know and I've subbed a little bit but other than that I don't know too much about court. So I'll kind of talk from just me knowing from what I know which isn't too much but in an official ship position you work in one courthouse one sorry one courtroom with one judge. You're basically that assigned court reporter for that courtroom. And um, different days mean different things. So like Mondays and Tuesdays could be docket days. Wednesday could be like, I don't know, they could have like a trial, a small trial from Wednesday to Friday. Or you have, you know, on Friday you have a void hour starting and the whole next week you have a full week of trial. So it's really different, but mainly it's like docket days, which means they have, you know, a bunch of different cases for that day. And... They come up, they talk to the judge about their case, they most likely reset a case 
or something and then the next case comes up and it's a little bit repetitive um that's kind of how like your weekly works you do go in pretty much punch in punch out nine to five you're not always on your machine writing from nine to five but sometimes you are in inside the courtroom and then you do have an office most likely that is your office most officials that i know don't work from home now since covid and everything that changed just pretty much everything but i know my mom sometimes she does get to work from home if her judge is not going to be there but i wouldn't say that that's like the norm so pretty much you're like in the office every day i would say and it really depends on the courthouse and really depends on the judge how much you're at home but usually it's like an office job like you're there working for the county this ends the interview chloe salazar um I hope I helped some people out with these questions. Thank you for your time, as always. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Like Michael said, I hope that this was helpful. Hope I answered some of your questions. I know this was kind of different and kind of fun and silly, but again, hopefully it brought some insight to some of these things that you guys have been worrying about. If you have questions, leave them down below, and maybe I will do another video like this and answer more questions. And don't forget to subscribe if you're really liking the Court Boarding Series and if you want to see more videos because... I don't know. I don't have too many more ideas for this court reporting series. So if there's a certain video that you do want to see, let me know. I have a couple more ideas, but not too much more. So I'm most likely going to be on the tail end of this court reporting series. Maybe I will make court reporting incorporated into like day in the life videos, but I don't know if I'll necessarily like include it into a series unless I'm just talking about court reporting for the day. But yeah, that's pretty much it. And I hope to see you guys soon. Bye.